Hello, and welcome to Boomer and Beyond Wellness. I'm Angela Fischetti. So today we're going to be doing a session on yoga-based stretches for the hamstrings. And they kind of get kind of pesky, right? They get very tight, the back of the thighs. And oftentimes this will affect your lower back. This will affect your hips. So both areas can be very, very tight. Um, the muscles involved with the hamstring muscle group are three muscles. We have the biceps femoris the semitendinosus, and the semimembranosus. And as a group, they perform the actions of flexing the knee or bending the knee and also extending the hip. So you can understand why there could be low back and hip tightness as well. So let's see what we can do about that with this session. Now, the accessories we're going to be using today, well, we're going to use a, a stability ball. And this one is um 45 centimeters it's not fully blown up also of course a yoga sticky mat a couple of yoga blocks and here's a reminder for some of you this would be level one this would be level two and level three you can stack the blocks if you wish also a yoga strap i like a yoga strap because it's softer for the hands if you have hand issues like arthritis or decutrins contracture trigger finger and then i also have a couple of um folded hand towels and um we'll do, I'll, sh I'll show you how to use those to help support the knees and your head in various postures um and now this leads me into the medical disclaimers and you do want to pay attention folks because the ball and the mat are oftentimes made uh, from latex, so you want to look for um, non-latex or latex-free if you do have a latex allergy. Uh, going further into precautionary measures for those of you who have any back spine issues whatsoever. And in particular, if you've been told not to like bend over or bend down toward the floor to pick up something. So that's a forward flexion of the spine. And um, also if you have postural deviations, in particular, hyperkyphosis, that's the one where you're kind of rounded over that punched appearance. Um, if you're medicated or not for hypertension, if you have vertigo, GERD, pinched nerve in the neck, rotator cuff muscle issues deep within the shoulders, if you've ever had a TIA, a transient ischemic attack or a stroke, or carpal tunnel syndrome. So I'm going to invite you all to preview the video first, to not immediately participate, but to look for what you can do. Because when we have chronic issues, we are pretty good at knowing, especially when we have them for decades, we're good at knowing um, what we can't do. So let's broaden that perspective to include what you can do. And even if you come away from this with one movement, that would be delightful. Uh, we're going into a thunderstorm here in Miami Beach, so you might hear a bit of that. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so you just want to make sure you keep yourselves hydrated for any workout. Always feel free to stop and rest. Um, this particular level of yoga might be a little bit more intermediate, but like I said, let's have you just preview it and decide if it works for you. Now, if you do decide that, well, you know what? I can't decide. I'm a little bit confused. I'm not sure if I can do this. Then I would show it to the medical healthcare practitioner who knows your body best to help you make an informed decision, let them preview it for you as well. All right, so let's begin here. So I'm already partially in the posture. I'm just gonna set this momentarily to the side. Um, but this is a seated wide angle. In yoga, we call this Upadishta Konasana. So when you're sitting here, <clears throat> excuse me, what you want to do is place your hands underneath your buttock flesh. Pull the flesh not only straight back, but out wide toward the shoulders. And I'm going to just do a little bit of rocking from side to side. So I'm sitting up and forward on the front edge of the ischial tuberosity, which are my cyst bones. Now, for those of you with back spine issues, postural deviations, I'm going to suggest that you keep yourselves upright here. You can work with your fingertips. Now, for some, you might like be like this, trying to get your legs out wide. Well, number one, 
feel free to bring them closer together, okay? But also what you can do is you can sit on one or two blocks, you can stack them. And, uh, but what will happen is your knees, your, your knees will pop up off the floor. So they will be, they won't be supported. This is where you can use your folded up hand towels and bring them underneath your knees for support. You always want to have your, um, your, your joints supported. So I'm gonna bring my hands out front, maybe push forward a little bit more, press down and out. And then I'm gonna walk the hands out in front and I'm cupping the fingertips. And I'm just basically lifting and lengthening. Yes, we're going into a forward bend, folks, but I like to think of it as we're in a we're in a back bend that's helping us go into a forward bend because the lumbar spine of the low back and the cervical spine of the neck both are in a natural lordotic curve that lends itself to this to a back bend. But now I am going this, I'm hinging from the hips, by the way, taking my time. You can use your blocks out in front of you, just the hands if you wish, wish, and I'm pushing down and out through the legs. So I don't attack the hamstrings straight on. Oh my goodness, I don't, because for me, they're just really tight. So I like to you know, work around them and invite them gently into the stretches. So we are obviously stretching here, the hip adductors, the inner thighs. Yes, the hamstrings, the calves, Achilles tendon traveling down the leg to the soles of the feet, the fascia, the connective tissue underlying the feet in there. Everything's getting stretched here. I really feel a delightful stretch here on my back as well. And breathe. You can lower your head all the way down, except those of you who are medicated for hypertension, you have vertigo or GERD, let's keep that head up at all times. Unless you already know, it's okay for you to do this with the head flat down. Now I'm going to hold on to my low legs and kind of spiral them laterally while I think about medially rotating my inner thighs, internally rotating. So definitely spiraling action is going on here. And then to come out of it, what I do is I place the hands down and I'm going to extend, I'm going to lengthen, really, you want to think in those terms, of lengthening the torso forward to slowly come up. Man, that feels really good. <laughs> okay, so let me grab my ball and I'm going to stay in this position a little more forward. And I'm going to use the ball here. Well, those of you with back spine, you can play with this, but you can press down on the ball to lift the torso. And I'm gonna just keep walking the ball out in front. And at some point you may not see the ball, I don't know, it might go off screen a bit, but I'm really going for those back muscles, the muscles all near the scapulae, those shoulder blades. Oh, wonderful stretch for the latissimus dorsi that big swimmer's muscle. Mm. And then using the abdominals, pulling the belly button in, work that core to slowly come on up. I'm gonna walk the ball over toward my right big toe, just turn toward it. I'm placing my left hand on the right thigh and I'm pushing down and out. Mm. Just getting all of this stretched, the side torso, and breathe. Now I'm going to just roll the ball over and then turn my sternum toward the ceiling. And come a little more forward, a little more room. Left hand comes to the waist. And then I bring the arm out and up. Now, if you have pinched nerve or rotator cuff, this might be about where you need to stop, or if you can't lift it at all, just keep the hand to the waist. 
and pushing down and out as they reach out through the ball and take that nice lateral flexion. So we're getting all that parsva side or flank is we call that in yoga. Stretching the intercostal muscles between the ribs responsible for 25% of your respiratory cycle. And then I'm gonna inhale, turn toward the ball and just help it back over the leg. And exhale, take it back out in front. I'm gonna go forward again to see where this takes me. And breathe. Oh. No. And then inhale, walk it back in again. Abdominals lift and lengthen. Exhale, take it over toward the left big toe. Push this down and out. Sometimes that opposite hip wants to lift. And then I'm going to take it over the ball. Spiral the chest away from the floor, stern toward the ceiling. Arm up and over. Breath in and out. Also stretching the oblique muscles near the waist. They help us to rotate that spine. We might get some spinal adjustments here. Just feels great. And inhale, I'm gonna turn back toward the ball. Should I take it one more time out in front? Yeah, why not? And exhale into that stretch, but keep the head up everybody. And breathe. And then we're going to walk that ball back in. Set the ball off to the side. And I'm going to draw the legs together and give them a good shake out. Maybe windshield wiper them a little bit. Now, I'm going to take my blocks and turn in this direction for you. Now, I have to let you know, for carpal tunnel syndrome, this hand position is contraindicated because the wrists are bent. So you can use your blocks, those of you without carpal tunnel or palms to the floor. But for carpal tunnel, I will join you on this for the moment, is you just turn the fingers down into a soft fist. Don't curl the nails into your skin, all right? And we come into the flat part, and you can do these movements from here. I'm going to choose to use the blocks for those who like it. I also might choose, in fact, to do a carpal tunnel on the blocks. I like a lot of height here. I'm coming into cat cow. So this is a spine extension and a spine flexion. So on the extension, I drop the belly down, tip the tailbone up, and pull the heart center forward, up and back, round those shoulders back. So you're in a back end, but caution, please, for those of you who have had a transient ischemic attack or a stroke, don't want to lift the head up too much. You just want to keep the head kind of neutral. So we hold here, knees in the same line as the hips, pushing that ground away. And then on the exhale, tuck the buttocks under. Now, those of you with the back spine issues, postural deviation, hypertension, vertigo, GERD, you're going to come into a flat back table position, neutral, while the rest of us just proceed into spine flexion, which is a cat pose. And it's basically an abdominal crunch lifting up onto all fours. Keep drawing the belly button in toward the small of the back, engage that transverse abdominus. Inhale, let's release into spine extension. This is the cow pose. Exhaling into spine flexion, the cat. I don't like to go real fast through this work. And one more of each, inhale. And exhale, let's please hold for a moment. And then we come back to flat back table position. And now I'm gonna remove the blocks. <clears throat> Actually, let me just put them over here. And 
back to the hands on the ground. This time, well, yes, I'm gonna stay with the soft fist here, but I'm gonna bring my knees a bit wider than the hands. I'm gonna work on thread the needle. So on the inhale, I bring the arm up, turn and look up at that middle finger, push the ground away with the opposite hand, and then exhale. You know, slide that arm under the other, all the way out in front, lower down onto the side. Take your hand and pull your outer hip back as you draw that inside hip forward. And then arm comes up. Hold here. There's not a lot of pressure on my neck, folks. There's lengthening going on on the bottom arm, out through that middle finger. Now inhale, immediately rotate the upper arm, bend the elbow behind you. Exhale, try to grab the inner thigh flesh of the opposite thigh. Roll that shoulder back even more. And breathe. Belly button pulled in. Inhale the arm up. Exhale, drape it on top of the other and slide it forward. So this is a nice stretch to rotator cuff muscles. Belly button pulled in to protect the back. And then inhale, I bend the elbow. Exhale, slide on out. Now from here, I want you to continue your cat cow. However, I'm gonna turn in the opposite direction now. And I'm gonna do cat cow with blocks. but flat palms. So working with that spine extension and that spine flexion, definitely do not want to eat for several hours prior to doing any kind of working out, but especially yoga-based work. One more of each. Now I'm going to just emphasize that cat a little bit more so we get a bit more work abdominally. Belly button pulled in. That transverse abdominus does act as your internal girdle, your internal corset. And then we come back to flat back table. Let's do that thread the needle on the other side. I will go into the position of soft fists here. And knees, for me, I go wider because I have some back issues from a, uh, a truck accident years ago. But I'm doing great. Just a couple of little modifications that I make are really helpful. The inhale, arm up. Turn and look up at the middle finger. Push. Oops. Pardon me. Let's get that. Just stay steady. Okay, one more time. Inhale, the arm up. Exhale, hold. I'm pushing the ground away while reaching for the sky. And then exhale, we're gonna thread the needle underneath and turn the head, looking up, arm to the ceiling, reaching in both directions. Pull that hip back, opposite hip forward. And then you immediately rotate the shoulder, internally rotate it, bend at the elbow, Take a hold of the opposite inner thigh flesh to then roll shoulder back as you try to reach that bottom hand a little more forward. Beautiful stretch here by the um, scapulae, shoulder blade. And breathe. Inhale, arm up. Exhale, drape it down and reach it beyond the bottom hand. Thread the needle. And then we come back to just always take a. I, I love to grab cat cow as often as possible. Remember the placement of the head. And you can take an embryo pose if you would like.
So I'm sitting back toward the heels, reaching forward. And now I want to come on to my back. So there's several ways to come down onto the back. Now, first of all, before you lie down on your back, those of you medicated or not for hypertension have vertigo GERD. I need your head elevated a little bit. So that's where you're going to bring your towels into play here. Otherwise, there's three ways here that we can come lying down on the backs. So you want to grab a hold of the backs of your thighs, feet firmly planted on the ground, belly button in. You're going to do a C curve up the spine to roll down onto your back. Or you can hold on to the back of those thighs and roll down onto one elbow, then the other, or <laughs> last one, legs out in front, arms out, belly button in. Now you do have to have a pretty decent back for this. Take your time and slowly roll down onto the back. And then I'm going to ask you to bring the knees up into the chest for full wind pose. Now, I like to protect the knees as much as possible rather than always hugging them tightly in. You can do that if you don't have knee issues. For those with knee issues, hands behind the knees. And let's just gently rock from side to side. So we're loosening up the back, loosening up the hips, right? We're preparing to get those hamstring muscles straight on. We're working around it from different angles. Now, from here, I'm going to ask you to lift your feet like so. So the feet are called dorsiflex. That's the position they're in. Soles of the feet as if they're placing a stamp on the ceiling. You're going to grab the outside arches of the feet. The elbows bend to the inside of the knees. Now, you can also use your yoga strap around that, around the feet. And you gently rock from side to side. And it's a happy baby pose, right? Happy baby. And then we come back to center. Now what I'm going to do is start to straighten this leg while I hold half of happy baby. So, yep, I'm going to feel more at the inner thigh. But I'm going to feel that hamstring here a little bit more as well. Stretching the calves, stretching the sole of the foot, right? The uh, the connective tissue. Just hold here, the fascia. And breathe. Keeping that belly button pulled in. I'm going to re-bend that knee and straighten the opposite leg. And one more time, happy baby with the rocking. And here we go. We're going to do the reclining version of this, the wide angle posture. Supta Konasana. So lots of inner thigh, but lots of hamstring, calf, Achilles tendon. Now. I'm going to rebend and come back to happy baby. And I'm going to lower this foot down because I want you to focus on this one. And I'm going to straighten it. And this becomes more of that hamstring stretch. So you can use your strap around the ball of the foot or not. And then if you want a deeper stretch, let this one go out in front. So I'm pushing out from both heels. Point the bottom foot, it's up to you. This is a nice big hamstring stretch. Mm. And then we re-bend. Pull both knees in, back to happy baby. And now we'll take it the other way, the outside leg. So here we go, place this one down. I like to begin my hamstring stretch with this foot braced down on the floor to help the back a bit. And then we start to straighten this. Use your strap around the ball of the foot. 
And if you want, I'm going to hold here a little bit. This one's a little tighter. So when you're holding the foot, you are holding here in what's called Ara Hastasana, hand to foot pose, in Sutta, which is reclining. Now, if you grab the, the big toe in Yogi Toe Lock, well, now we change the name of it to, let's see, Padang Bhushtasana, which is hand to the Hasta Padang Bhushtasana. That's it. B, which is hand to big toe pose, but again with sutta, reclining. Let's go for it. Let's see what happens. You can always back off, folks. Don't have to go to your maximum. And please, if you find that you cannot breathe when you're doing your stretches, you have gone beyond your edge. You want us to be able to speak when you stretch. This is not about doing aerobics. Just let all that stretch out. And breathe. Oh, yes. And then I'm going to return it into happy baby and just rock from side to side. And I'm going to roll over to the side. Now, I'm supposed to tell you for yoga to roll over to your right. Well, I have to tell you something. I want you to roll over to whichever side feels most comfortable for you, okay? So now we're going to come up here to a plank pose. Remember carpal tunnel, right? Mm, this is wrist extension, not good for you. So you can take your plank and I'll do it with you on this round um, with the soft fist. You can use blocks, folks, and of course, with your palms flat. You can also do a one-legged plank if that works for you. So I'm pushing back through the heels. The belly button is in. Planting your hands to the ground and pushing the ground away while plugging the arms into their sockets. Just a little bit, looking out in front. Energy going back through the heels, energy going forward through the crown of the head and out the heart. Now from here, I will flatten my palms, but carpal tunnel can remain in soft fist to come into down dog. Now a nice way to approach it is to bend the knees, lift the heels, start to push the heels down with bent knees, then straighten the knees. Lastly, lower the head down. And if you want to, you can bend one knee, then the other, just emphasizing a stretch on the opposite leg. This helps with the hamstrings as well. Now from here, I'm gonna take my leg up, inhale, and exhale. I'm gonna step that foot forward, holding here in what's called a low lunge. All right, we're gonna hold in the lunge. From here, I wanna tie in a, another hamstring stretch. So I'm gonna keep that back heel very high off the ground, and I'm going to straighten that front leg. Inhale, look out in front. Exhale, drape down. So I call this a high pyramid pose. So you want to think about bringing your left ribs, your left shoulder toward that right big toe. And breathe. Ooh. That is going right up the whole length of the leg into the glute into the back. Now I'm gonna come into full out pyramid or, or a variation of it by making the pose a little shorter. Slide that front foot back a bit. So I'm gonna draw that back hip further back as I draw this outside hip toward you forward. Inhale, look out in front. Exhale once again, drape down. We wanna protect the back by pulling the belly button in. Now inhale, look out in front. On the exhale, I'm going to return into that low lunge. And then I'm going to lower the knee down to flatten the top of the back foot. I'm going to grab my blocks here. 
hoping the ball stays nicely steady over there. If you want to use your blocks, you can. They're on the same line as your ankle joint. Now, this is where we tie in the stretching of the anterior side. We have the quadricep, we have the hip flexor. You can also lift up into the blocks, take it higher up. The higher up you go, the further back you bring your blocks and the deeper extension you're going to get. Over here, it's like you're creating a little back bend. Now, if you don't want to work with the blocks, you can also crisscross your forearms and push away. You don't want to collapse down into the thigh. You want to push up and away. And maybe you even come up like so. It's up to you. Breathe, just the delicious stretch for all of this. Lower the hands down. Now from here, I'm gonna pull the hips back and lift the ball of that foot up, the sole of the foot. I'm just keeping the heel in touch and I'm sliding, dragging that toward me, pulling that hip back, outside hip a little more forward. Inhale, look out in front, belly button in, exhale, fold. Again, hamstring, just kind of like doing a half Hanuman, the monkey pose, Hanumanasana, but half of it. Left shoulder, left ribs toward that right big toe. And then inhale, I'm going to come back into my low runners, back to my lunge. Now, here we go. Full out Hanumanasana, split pose. Push out through the front heel, push back through the ball of the back foot. So this is dedicated to that trickster monkey god, Hanuman, who makes us think we can do this. And breathe. Now you can play with this, you can fold into it and just gently rolling in and out. I do this because it helps me with all three heads of that trice of the um, hamstring muscle. Staying in breath. And slowly come up. Now, if you want to take this to the next step, hand to the inside, bend the back knee, externally rotate your shoulder. You can hold right here if you like. This might be a great stretch for some of you, right? You can use a yoga strap and hold on to that or grab at your ankle, grab it with both hands, interlock, dorsiflex the foot. And I'm pulling back as I push forward through my right heel, I'm pulling back with my left. Puffing up the chest. Then if I want to take it to another kind of different angle on this, take your peace fingers and wedge them between the big and second toe. You could also use a yoga strap there. Bend the elbow to the inside. Now I moved my hand so that I can draw my foot toward my butt while I turn my sternum toward the ceiling. Hold here and breathe. Now you can release here. Arm can come up and over. Remember all the precautionary measures that we talked about. You can use a strap around the foot and stay up much higher to do this. And then I'm gonna turn in toward that front leg again, one more time, draping over. Oh man, does this feel good? Ah. Hi. And then I'm gonna come back out and up through my lunge, my low lunge. And you folks, you stay there in your low lunge. I'm gonna change sides here. And I'm going to join you now, everybody, in a plank. Breathe. 
And then I'm going to flatten my palms. Energy back through the heels, energy forward through the heart. And from here, inhale, exhale. Into downward facing dog. Again, you can approach it, bend knee, heels down. I want you to press down in your inner heels as you turn your outer heels slightly out. And then lastly, lowering the crown of the head. You can nod head yes here. You can shake head uh -huh. And now I'm going to bring opposite leg up. Inhale, exhale, step it forward. Low lunge, right? Hold here. Try to keep the head up. Watch all this stuff. It goes on a lot in yoga. A lot of like collapsing. And now from here, we're going to straighten that front leg and keep that back heel super high. Inhale, look out the front. Exhale, drape down. Let's get that nice hamstring stretch directly. Poking the tailbone up. Right ribs, right shoulder toward the left big toe this time. Now you can understand why it's a good idea not to eat before you do this work. <laughs> and then inhale, lift the head, exhale, bend the knee. Inhale, step the back foot forward, exhale, straighten and drag that front foot closer. Inhale, look out in front, lift the head, exhale, drape down. You're coordinating breath with movement. In Sanskrit, that's referred to as vinyasa, synchronizing the movement with the breath. Mm. Sink into it. And then inhale, look forward, bend the knee. I'm going to come back into my low lunge. Exhale, and let's lower that right knee down for a moment. Oh, this one is way tighter on me, folks. I jump a lot <laughs> on the rebounder. I'm a big jumper. And boy, it is tighter. I also love to do long, long fitness walks on the beach, wearing my weighted vest. See my fingertips. You can use your blocks. You can cross the forearms. Just don't collapse over the thigh. Get flexor stretching, quadriceps stretching, back extension, hip extension. It's just fantastic stuff. You can come up higher. Oh, are you breathing in and out, preferably through the nose? Mm. And here. Slowly come back down, and here's we come into that half of Hanuman. Ah. And you're going to lift up into the heel and just kind of slide that back so you can draw the hip back opposite hip forward to square off that back. Inhale, look out in front. Exhale, drape right forward to go down. Again, right ribs, right shoulder toward it that left big toe. You want to sit all the way back down, you can. You use a strap around the ball of the foot. You can have blocks underneath your hands to help you here. And then inhale, I return into my low lunge. So here we go. We're going to shimmy back to shimmy forward and Hanumanasana, hello. I'm always kind of shifting around, finding that place of, ah. <laughs> Flatten the foot, then. And if you want, drape forward and down. Again, I'm going to do that little rolling in and out. Oh, getting all three heads of that hamstring group.
You're showing yourself a lot of love when you do this kind of stretching, folks. And then inhale, come up. You want to take it to the next step. Now, by the way, you can also put a block underneath this hip here on the, on the one that's facing my white backdrop. You can be up higher that way to help you. Bring my, up my hand into the inside, then the knee, external rotation of the shoulder. So like I said before, you can hold that arch of the foot. That's the inner arch or come around, grab the ankle interlock your fingers or use a strap or one hand on the other it all works and I'm pulling away pushing out through the front heel while pushing back always oppositional movement particularly in yoga stretches postures always oppositional movement going on at the same time and then I'm going to play with this yogi toe lock you can strap the foot or ankle and Pulling one in to draw forward on the opposite. Bracing myself with this elbow on the floor. You can use a block underneath that elbow, by the way. I'm getting spine adjustments here. It's fabulous. Then I'm going to release. Arm comes up and over. That block out of my way. You want to thrust your heart forward through this whole window here between your arms and then you turn back toward that leg and release back into it. Are you having any fun yet? Hmm. And then you slowly come back up, returning to our low lunge. And I'm gonna go for another plank. Why not? Beautiful pose that incorporates the core muscles and more. And another down dog, yes. Once again, push down on the inner heels, turn the outer heels slightly out, fan out those fingers, fan out your toes. Engage the quadriceps. They're lifting up on the kneecaps. And I'm going to come into embryo. But this time I'm going to face you for the embryo pose. And now from here, I'm going to swing my legs out in front. And I'm going to grab a hold of my blocks. Now, I will be coming on to the back. Now, this is where, for this particular posture, just make sure this thing doesn't have a life of its own. <laughs> uh, for this particular posture, we're going to be doing a um, supported bridge. Typically, in bridge pose, you don't have any support underneath your head. So I just want to let those of you know who, who are medicated for hypertension GERD, or have GERD or vertigo, you might have to play with this and see what works for you individually. All right. So I'm going to come down onto my back. Those blocks close by. I want to make sure I have room back there. I have so much cat hair on me, folks. <laughs> oh, my cat tea is all over. All right, so full wind pose again. I'm gonna just gently rock it side to side, release all of that. So now to offset a lot of that forward flexion that has to be done really for hamstring work. I mean, there's a lot of work. I, sh I shouldn't say has to be done, but, but is done often, right? Because of the nature of the hamstring muscle. Um, I want to put the spine into spine extension. So therefore you can use your, a block, you can use two blocks, you can stack them. I'm going to take my two blocks this way, side by side, level three. So it's going to create a nice back bend, but only you know what you can handle. So I like to do this by bringing the feet closer toward the butt and lifting the heels and lifting the butt up. All right. From here, I'm going to take my blocks, like I said, level three. They're right up against each other and I'm placing them underneath my sacrum. The sacrum is kind of that upside down triangular uh, plate at the base of the spine. 
We want to have that fully supported. I'm bringing the arms a bit wider apart, palms up. Now you can stay here like this. So this is a Sukta Setu Bandhasana. This is a supported bridge posture. So wonderful to open up the hip flexors, right? And even you know, some of you might feel this in the quads, but maybe not, that's okay as well. And you just wanna have this as an acceptable back bend, because it is. And um, so I will say though, for those of you uh, medicated or not for hypertension, I would not go much higher than level one on a block, all right? I would not go much higher than that because this is an inversion posture, which means head is below the heart. So I'm gonna bring one leg out in front. Now this just changed the name of the pose. This is a reclining supported half step pose. So reclining would be sutta, supported salamba half artha, staff would be dandasana. Oh, that stretch out. Oh. I, I can feel this across the chest, across the front shoulders. You don't want to jam the chin into the chest. We want some space there between the heart and the throat chakras. The Vishuddha and the Anahatma chakra. So I'm going to inhale, bend that knee, exhale, straighten the opposite leg. Now this one, I got to tell you, this one's tighter. This one's tighter. I'm just going to let that happen, see what I can handle here. You want everything to be in breath. You want everything here in this type of stretching to be tolerable. You're not trying to muscle it up. You're doing, in fact, the opposite. Now I'm going to inhale and bring it back in. Now I'm going to change the pose again, both legs out. Now we're in a reclining supported staff pose. Sukta Salamba Dandasana. Maybe reaching those arms up and overhead. Oh, I could just fall asleep here, my friends. This is delicious. You do so much forward flexion in life. It's just great to extend and back bend. The hips open, inhale, lower the arms, exhale, bend the knees, hold for the moment as you return into your supported bridge. Walking the feet closer toward the butt again, lifting the heels, lift off the blocks, stay up there, palms down. Now, pull the belly button in as we lower down the upper back, the middle back, stay there. Pull in deeper because we want the back to touch down before the butt. Got it? And then lastly, sacrum, coccyx, walk the feet out in front, the butt, stay there. Just let that low back release. Now, those of you medicated or not, hypertension, vertigo, GERD, please get the towel underneath your head. And from here, let's do it. Pull it back in. Full wind pose is called Pavanamuttasana, really done like this. Inhale, open. Exhale, opposite. Now, not going to go full rocking again. I even like to do this type of movement. I'm not kicking out through the feet. I'm letting the feet be dead weight. Circling in and away from each other. Lovely way to release the back and the hips. Let's play a little bit more. Let's bring the soles of the feet together. Let's just get a, a little extra love to external rotation of the hip joint, it leading into hip ab abduction. The reduction away from the midline. This is goddess pose. If you want to tie in that shoulder girdle rotation, arms up and overhead, holding onto the elbows. Breathe because this posture is just so lovely to relax the abdominal organs and intestines as well.
and sweeping the arms open like a snow angel, hands on or alongside the knees. Let's bring the knees together. And then from here, I'm going to bring my legs out front, lifting my arms up and overhead. I'm stretching my left arm and left leg away from each other, lengthening and then release. And then as you inhale, stretch and lengthen right arm and right leg away from each other and release. And now I'm interlocking the fingers, forming a steeple, legs together, and I'm stretching both ends away from each other. And then we slowly release back down. Let's take a couple of breaths here. Again, rolling over to whichever side feels best for you. And it's almost like you're doing a one-arm push-up here. Bring yourselves back up. And I want to thank you so much for joining me again today here at Boomer and Beyond Wellness. Do make sure you drink some water and eat your greens, eat your beans. And until next time, be well. And thank you so much. Don't forget, subscribe.